Well, how's everyone this morning? Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. You excited about who the Lord is? Amen. Not about who we are, but about who He is. Amen? Amen? I tell you what, if you will, turn to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We've been talking here lately about spending time with the Lord. Amen? About becoming one with Him. Well, can I tell you, it's not changed. This morning we're going to be talking about spending time with the Lord and becoming one with Him. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's face it, our only hope, our only way of making it out of here is if we hang on to Jesus. Right. Amen? He's the only option we got, folks. Right. You can grab hold of stuff. You can grab hold of, of mother and father and brother and children. That's not going to get it. Amen? We need to grab hold of Jesus. And we need to hold on to Him like our lives depend on it. You know why? Because it does. Our lives do depend on it. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of coming into this place. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching through that camera. Lord, I thank you for opening every heart, every mind this morning making it receptive under your word. And Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, for your mercy, for your grace, for your peace that you give us. And Lord, I thank you for continuing to, to walk with us, Lord, continuing to have mercy on us. And Lord, I thank you this morning for allowing me to be your mouthpiece. And Lord, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just a little bit stirred up this morning. I'm going to try to calm it down just a little bit. But You know, the way the world's going today, we got two options. We can either go the way of the world or we can go the way of Jesus. Right. Amen? I'm not going to get political this morning. I'm not going to go this way and go that way. I'm just going to tell you. When we walk, in, our walk ought to line up with the Word of God. Amen. If our walk does not line up with the Word of God, there's a problem. That's right. Amen? Amen? And I don't care how, how you try to make it sound or, or how gentle you try to be, Sin is sin, no matter what. Amen? Amen? I mean, everybody tells me, Jesus said cover sin. Jesus done took care of that. He has. My question to you is the same question that was asked in the Bible. Does that give us a right to just sin then? I mean, since he's covered it, does that give us a right just to go do what we want to do? And I mean, just sin willfully? The Word tells us no. By all means, no. Right? Sin is still sin. You know, I was reading this week about the, the lady that was caught in adultery. They took her to him, wanted Jesus to stone her. Right? That was the law. And you remember Jesus, he stooped down and he, he wrote in the, in the sand several times and one by one they all got up. He said, let he that is without sin cast the first stone. Which means everybody's missed it. Everybody's sin. And he looked at the woman and he said, Where are those thine accusers? And she said, Father, I have none. He said, And I condemn you not. But go and sin no more. Right? See, he, he, he covered sin, but he still called sin, sin. Right? So know the way you're going today. Amen? I don't care which party it is. I don't, if it don't line up with this word, don't go that way. Right. Amen? Bottom line. Everybody say, well, you this, you that. I say, no, I, I'm for the word of God. Whichever way goes the way of the word of the Lord, that's the way I'm going. That's right. Amen? That's the way every Christian should be. You know what? If it was like that, if every Christian voted according to this book, Christians would never lose another election. Right? Amen? So we can blame whoever we want to about what's going on, but it's our fault. It's Christians' fault. Right? Amen? Folks, let's know the facts. Let's spend time with the Lord. Amen? So many people think in 2021 the Lord has changed. You know, what was wrong back then is not wrong anymore. The Lord, He's, he's come a long way. He's grown, if you will. No. 
He's not changed. He has not changed. My Bible tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. Amen? So he hadn't changed. What he didn't like then, he still don't like now. What he didn't like 100,000 years ago, he don't like now. Amen? Let's just pick up at verse number 1. This is Jesus talking. He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse number, verse number 3. He said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. Right? What does abide mean? What does it mean to abide with something? To live, to become one, to spend time. Right? When me and my wife got married, we abided with one another. Amen? We became one. That's what the Lord's looking for. He's looking for that same kind of relationship. Remember, he said, I'm married to you. I'm married to you. So he's looking for the same faithfulness that we would give our spouse or that our spouse would give us. He's looking for that same faithfulness. Amen? But most folks don't have time, do they? They don't have time to, to read the Word of God. They're too busy, you know, too much going on. Maybe it's time we quit having so much going on. Yeah. Right? I mean, I know we're going to lose this and we're going to lose that and it's going to cost us here and it's going to cost us over there in this world. But what are we going to gain in Jesus? Amen? What are we going to gain in Him? Verse number 5, He said, I am the vine... Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. He's talking about nothing that's going to line up, nothing that's going to be good for the kingdom. Amen? Because we're looking and we're seeing what the world is without him today, don't we? And the world's doing something, ain't it? Not a good place, is it? You know what? With all the troubles that we got, with all the problems that's going on, the United States of America is still the best place to live. Can I get an amen? You know what? Americans are the only one that can change it. Did you hear me? I didn't say, I didn't say African Americans. I didn't say Mexican Americans. I didn't say Asians Americans. I didn't say white Americans. I said Americans. Amen? Amen? Don't see yourself as a color. Right? See yourself as a person of God. That's right. right? Do you belong to Jesus? Well, then it don't matter what color you are. Amen? Amen? Jesus don't bless based on your color. He don't bless based on, on what you do, on your goodness. He blesses because that's who He is. He is love. Amen? Amen? Don't fall for all these lies that are going on. Amen? Get in the Word of God. See what the book says. Amen? You know the best way to conquer a people? Is to keep them confused and in chaos. Amen? Amen? The church world today is confused and in chaos. And the, and the rest of the world's even worse than that. But the church world is in bad shape too. Amen? You know why? We're not spending enough time. This word's just not enough, just not important enough. We just got so much that we want to do that we got to get done that we forget about Him. We forget about what's important. Amen? But I remember several years ago when I was so busy. You know, I had to make ends meet. I had a family. I had a car. I had a home. I had all this stuff. 
that I had to do. And I kept trying to make it happen. And you know what? The, the more I tried to make it happen, the harder it got. And it got to the point where I was working seven days a week and couldn't make it. Now, that's not a good place to be. Amen? You've heard me say that if you can't pay your light bill, it's not a financial problem, right? I'm speaking from experience. I made more then than I make now. And I couldn't pay my bills. You know why? I wanted too much. I had to have this, and I had to have that. You know what else? I wasn't in a financial covenant with the Lord. I wasn't honoring Him with my tithes and offerings. I wasn't going to church. Amen? You know, I got it covered. How about you? Got it covered? I know how to do this. Have you ever done something before and it worked? And then you thought, well, I know how to do this. So I'll just go back and do this again. Yeah. And next time it didn't work. Right. Then you wind up in a problem, don't you? Well, see, I wasn't smart enough after that first time to realize there was a problem. So I just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. But it wasn't the Lord's fault. He was trying to help me. That's right. He was trying to help me. But I wouldn't listen. I knew what I needed. I knew what was going to change my situation. But there was so much pressure, so much hollering at me that I couldn't, I couldn't hear it, couldn't see it. You ever had so much chaos going on in your life that you, you couldn't hear nothing but the chaos? That's, right. That's not a good place to be, amen? That's why every Sunday morning when people come in, I tell them, don't, don't think about the world. Don't think about what's going on today. Don't think about tomorrow. Think about right now. Right. Think about who Jesus is. Clear your mind right now and receive from Him. Right? Don't think about all that stuff. That's the devil's number one tool is yeah. to keep your mind confused and bombarded with all this stuff. Amen? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having stuff as long as stuff don't have you. Right? Right? Well, back then, stuff had me. I didn't have stuff. It had me. I had to have it. Right? And I figured, I know how to do this. But you know, you never count on your kids being sick, do you? You never count on them being sick and having to go to the doctor, to the hospital, and you being out of work. You never count on you being sick. There's a lot of things that, that we can do as long as everything stays just right. Right? But if you miss a day or two of work, it's just gone, ain't it? Just shot. Amen. Well, that's what happened. I got in a mess. And you know what? Jesus wasn't my true vine. I wasn't going to church. You know what? Even when I got in the mess, you know what I said? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In the mess that I was in, spending no time with him, not even going to church, not reading my Bible, not praying, not doing anything. But when I got in a big enough hole, I said, Lord, help me. Help me. And he tried and he tried and he tried. But it's hard to help somebody that won't listen to you, ain't it? It's hard to help somebody that won't do what you're telling them to do. Amen? So I'm not knocking anybody. You're looking at the number one. Amen? But the Lord didn't quit on me. He didn't throw me away. He just kept on. He just kept on loving me. He just kept on loving me. And you know what? One day, one day, I saw his grace. I didn't see his big stick. I didn't see his finger pointing out all my faults. I saw his grace. Have you ever seen his grace before? Amen. The only way we can see His grace, folks, is spend time with Him. Because if we don't spend time with Him, 
we going to see ourselves just like the world sees us. That we're not good enough. That we missed it again. Amen. That we in chaos. Jesus is not Lord of confusion. He's Lord of peace. So if you find yourself in chaos, if you find yourself just all stirred up and not knowing which way to go, Jesus is not there. There's no peace there. Jesus don't deal in confusion. He deals in peace. Amen? I had a procedure done Friday morning or Friday afternoon. And I'm just going to tell you, I wasn't looking forward to it. I was, I was nervous. I was unnerved, if you will. Amen? About 3 o'clock that morning, I still hadn't went to sleep. And I got up and, and I went in the kitchen and I just I said, Lord, what is this? He said, it's something you shouldn't have. It's fear. And fear don't belong to you. Fear don't belong to you. I wish I could tell you I snapped to it and didn't think nothing else about it. I didn't. But every time that thought came, I heard what the Lord said. Peace. I'm peace. Amen? You're a part of me. I'm peace. And I'm going to take care of you. Right? It don't matter what. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. Right? But that's not what the devil wanted. The devil wanted me to be uptight. Right? You know what he wants for you? Same thing. If he can get confusion in your life, if he can throw so much stuff on you that you can't see daylight, that's what he's going to do. But you know what? Talking from a man from experience, when you say stuff, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. I know this needs done. I know that needs done. But this is more important. That's when things start changing, folks. Past few weeks, things have changed for me. I've seen, I've seen some things, and I don't want to say too much too quick. Amen? Not in here, but some folks out there will start throwing rocks at me. They'll start throwing rocks. But you know what? All we need to know is that Jesus wants to be our number one. And if we make it through this world, he's going to be our number one. If he don't, we're going to bow to this world. Do you hear me? If you don't bow to Jesus, you're going to bow to this world. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. Amen? And the best way to bow to it is to start spending time. I talked about tithing and offering a while ago. It's not about your tithing and offering. It's about your time. Yeah. Amen? Because you know where you, where you start spending your time? That's where you're going to want to spend your money. That's right. That's Amen? Yeah. If you like to fish or you like to hunt and you spend your time doing that, where are you going to spend your money? That's right. If you like to race, where are you going to spend your money? That's right. If you like to sing, where are you going to spend your money? They don't give those CDs out for free, do they? They don't give those books for free. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of that. But I'm saying that can't be our goal. That can't be our number one. Folks, he's got to be our number one. Day and night, as we say here. And all of the rest of the time, you can have him do whatever you want to with it. But just day and night belongs to him. Amen? Miss Cheryl caught that. She said, there is no more time. That's right. If we spend in time with him day and night, there is no more time. The devil has no opportunity then. Right? We saw where the devil tried to tempt Jesus. And what did Jesus say? He carried him back to the Word every time, didn't he? And then the devil thought, well, I'll be crafty. I'll turn the Word around on him. But Jesus didn't fall for it, did he? He knew what the Word says. 
This morning, do you know what the Word says? If the devil comes to you and he tries to turn it around on you, do you know what the Word says? You know what? A lot of Christians don't know what the Word says. You know why? They don't spend time in it. Got quiet on that camera, didn't it? But it's the truth, folks. It's the truth. The Lord said, where you spend your time, that's what you're going to be like. If you spend your time with the world, you're going to be like the world. Amen? You hang around somebody, you're going to act like them. I don't care. You can say all day long, oh, that's not going to be me. I can, I can do this. I can handle this. No, you can't. You can't. All that stuff's going in, and you know what? One day it's coming out. It's planting seeds. You may not think so. You may not see it. Amen? I see people, and I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not throwing rocks. They go to the clubs, and they want me and my wife to go. Come on, go with us. You don't have to drink. Well, what do I want to do that for? Well, I mean, what, if I'm not going to partake in it, what do I want to be there for? That'd be like going to the steakhouse sitting now, watching everybody else eat. I mean, what fun would that be? Why would I want to go? I mean, I'm not throwing rocks this morning. And, and if that's your wagon. I'm telling you my wagon this morning. I'm telling you for me. I don't, I don't want to put myself in that situation. Amen? And if you're spending time with the Lord, you won't want to be there. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Can anybody tell me what they call alcohol? What do they call it? What does the liquor store call it? Spirits. Spirits. Amen? They got liquor stores in LaGrange. Spirits. We sell spirits. That mean anything to you? It's something that gets on the inside of you and it defiles you, don't it? It changes who you are. Amen? And I'm not, I'm not on alcohol this morning, so don't go throwing rocks. I'm on anything that's against the Word of God. Anything that's going to defile you, anything that's going to change what the Lord's called you to be. Amen? And I've known people just as good as they can be. They get a couple of drinks in them and you can't be around them. They either want to fight, they want to cuss, they want to dance, they, they want to laugh. It changes who they are, don't it? Amen? Either that or it brings out the real who they are, don't it? One of the two. But my point is it changes from the person that we know, don't it? Amen? It changes that person. Well, what's changing that person? That spirit that's being put on the inside. Right? That alcohol. You can agree with me this morning and not agree with me. I, it makes no difference to me whether you agree with me or not. I'm telling you the word of God. I'm telling you the truth this morning. Amen? So if, if you don't want to agree with me, that's fine. That's fine. But prove me wrong. Amen? Before you throw me away, prove me wrong. Right? Prove me wrong. I guess my, my number one thing is, folks, if we spending time with Him, if we walking with Him day and night like the Word says, we won't want all this other stuff. All this other stuff won't be important. It, it just won't be. Amen? You know, I remember when I first started going to church, and I was saved, but you know what? I wasn't on fire. And come around the middle of October, in church, I was MIA. I was missing in action. And I didn't go back till January. You know why? Deer season was in. I want a deer hunt. 
Listen, Don. You know, Sunday, Sunday morning, good morning to hunt. Right? Wednesday afternoon, good evening to hunt. So I didn't go. What was number one to me? You mean the Lord wasn't number one to me? Even though I was born again. And I didn't go to church and I didn't spend time with him. You mean he wasn't number one? Proof's in the pudding, ain't it? But then one day I got on fire. I heard what the Lord said. And you know what? That was it. It don't make no difference to me now what happens. He comes first. His word comes first. Amen? You won't see me miss a Sunday morning or a Wednesday to go hunt. You won't see it. It's not that important to me anymore. He's number one. Amen? Amen? Not honking my horn. I'm just showing you from, from where, I, where, I come, where I was to where I come from. I've had people want me to go different places and go hunting with them. You know, we'll, we'll go and we'll spend all weekend. Well, I got to be home Saturday. Why you got to be home Saturday? I got church Sunday. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be at church. Well, we're we not coming home till Sunday. Well, I can't go then. What you mean you can't go? I'm going to take care of everything. It ain't going to cost you anything. All you got to do is get in the truck and go. Yeah, it's going to cost me something. It's going to cost me my walk with the Lord. I made a commitment to Him. Have you made a commitment to Him, folks? It makes a difference. It makes a difference when you're committed to something. Right? Because, see, as long as you're not committed, you can just walk off anytime you want to, can't you? No strings attached, don't belong to you, don't mean nothing. Right? That's why the Lord wants a relationship. He wants to be committed, and He wants you to be committed to Him. Amen? How do we do that? We do that by spending time with Him, by being in His Word. Amen? Verse number 6. He said, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, if you abide in me, you shall ask what you will. You know what? When you're walking with the Lord, when you're spending time with the Lord, when he's number one, you're not going to ask for something crazy. Right? You're not going to ask for a million dollars. But you know what? I can tell you right now, I'm a firm believer. If you're spending time with the Lord and you need a million dollars, the Lord will take care of you. Can I get an amen there? He said he would. Right? So we shouldn't go out asking foolish things, asking amiss. Right? We ought to be spending time with him. Verse number 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto ye, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He said, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. For his friend. Amen? He said, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Jesus is calling you friend this morning. That means he wants a relationship. That means he wants to spend time with you. That means he wants to be your number one, and he wants you to be his number one. 
Amen. Amen. But it's up to us. It's not up to him. Folks, we can get wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in this world. We can get tied up in all of this stuff that's going on. We can get hooked on this woke culture that they call it now. It's up to you. It's not up to Jesus. Just because something is happening in the world today, don't make it Jesus is doing. Do you hear me? The devil has power also. And you know what? The devil's power will work in your life if you give it an opportunity. It's up to you. Right? Every morning I get up, I hear these words. Today is your day. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. And then the next thought that comes to me. Lie and blessing or death and cursing. That's what comes to me. And I got to look at that. And I have to study that. And you know what? When I look in that mirror, I got to know who's looking back. When you look in that mirror, do you ever wonder who's looking back? I have before. I've looked in that mirror and wondered who's looking back. Who is that man? Folks, it's, it's about the Word of God. It's the only thing that's going to change your life, change your situation, and change this world that we live in. The Word of God. Amen. There's evil everywhere. It's all around us. It's bombarding us. Evil. You know what's pushing all this division, all this strife? It's evil. It's not the Lord. All the chaos, all the greed, all the not enough, all the I got to have the power. That's not being pushed by the Lord. That's being pushed by evil. Amen. Amen. Get the Word of God and stand your ground. Amen. What's the old song, country song used to be? You got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. It's time we as Christians stood. Amen. Will the Lord let us down? Will He let us go under? If we stand on His Word, on the truth, is He going to let us go under? Not going to happen, is it? Let's quit compromising in. Let's quit compromising every day. Don't tell me you don't do it. Every day, every single one of us make a compromise. Every day. It may not, some days may not be as big as others, but we all compromise. We all see something and we choose to look the other way. Look the other way. I'm closing with this. Me and my wife was in the grocery store yesterday and there was a guy in there. And I'm going to tell you, he flat cussed that little little clerk out at the counter. Just flat. He called her some words I hadn't heard in a long time. In a long time. And I thought, the Lord loves both of them. Wonder how this is making the Lord feel. To hear one person talk to, him, talk to another person this way. Wonder how it made him feel. Amen. You know what? I want to get involved. But the Lord told me to leave it alone. You say, well, why didn't you do something? Well, what if I'd have done something? What would I have saw? Made another argument? We never know, do we? We never know. Amen? Folks, you better be spending time with the Lord. The way things are getting right now, you better be spending time with the Lord. I mean, that man could have pulled out a gun and then just went to shoot. 
Hello? It's time we quit standing for all this. It's time we get in this Word. Right? If every one of us hear the truth, know the truth, and walk the truth, they won't be episodes like yesterday. Do you hear me? They won't be episodes like that. They won't be. I'm sorry. Love will win out. But as long as division is there. Right? As long as somebody thinks somebody else is out to get them. As long as somebody's in fear. As long as somebody's in torment. We're going to have this. Let's stand up and take control. We as Christians can do it. We can do it, folks. But we've got to stand together. Amen? The Word of God hasn't changed. The Word of God is not a lie. It is the truth. Amen? And we've got two options. We can stand it, or we can walk off and leave it. In the end, it's up to us. Not up to him. Amen. I love you this morning. I appreciate you being here. I really do appreciate you being here. Without you being here and you watching through that camera, there wouldn't be any need for me being here. So I do thank you. I do love you. I pray for you daily. Every day I pray for you. I call you by name. Amen. I start with where you sit in the church and I go all the way around the building. Every day. Every day. Amen. I hope that you pray for me like that every day. Amen. Right? And then have faith in what you're praying for me. Because right. just your prayer won't do me no good. I need your faith. Amen. Right. Amen. Folks, the world needs our help. The Lord needs our help. This morning, my final question to you. You that are here and watching through that camera. This morning, are we His disciples... Or are we just volunteers? Are we committed this morning or can we just walk away at the drop of a hat? Just something to think about. How committed are we? I've seen a lot of people come through this door. And they told me this is where the Lord had them. And that they were fully committed and they'd never leave this place. But they gone. And you know what? A lot of them's in a mess. I'm talking about showing up a mess. You know what? Some of them dead. I'm not knocking them, but some of them's dead. Evil one out. Amen? Choose wisely. Every day when you get up, choose wisely. Today is your day. Amen. Once again, I love you. Let's have a closing prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again for coming into your house. Lord, we thank you for your word. It never quits. It never fails. It never gives up. Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that heard this word. Lord, I thank you for encouraging them. Lord, I thank you for drawing them next to you. Lord, letting them know just how much you really do love us. And Lord, I thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless America.